Hey everyone, this is Leanne from Of Love and Chip Lab and the founder of Sub That Sublimation Graphics and Tutorials here on Facebook. If you're joining us on YouTube, please be sure to come check out our Facebook group where all of our videos air live before they're added to our YouTube channel unedited. And of course, if you're catching us live on Facebook, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Those links are in the video description depending on where you're watching. Tonight's tutorial is with our white toner printer from iColor. It is the iColor 550. The new model out on the market is the iColor 560. We are going to be demoing the iColor two-step select ultra bright media. Now Select Ultra Bright came on the market just about a year ago and it was an instant success. I actually was getting really jealous at all the people who had had an opportunity to try it because I had not been able to because it kept being out of stock. Thankfully the stock shortage is completely resolved now and I was able to snag a pack a few months ago and give it a try. I was immediately impressed at the quality of this media, how much nicer it looks, um, the softer feel, the better stretch and the affordable price point. Basically, it checks all of the boxes for those who are printing with their white toner printer on garments and are looking for the best of all worlds in, in terms of affordability and the output of their final product. So tonight I'm gonna to be doing just a relatively quick demo walking you through how to use the iColor Two-Step Select Ultra Bright. It is a little bit um, more particular than the Select version is or other two-step papers, but it honestly only took me about three tries to really nail it. So since then, I've been really happy with using it. I'm just gonna be doing a super generic Bella and Canvas 100% cotton unisex t-shirt. Uh, nothing special, I purchased this from Shirtspace, and uh, that's where I generally buy all of my shirts. We're gonna make a cute shirt for fall, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to begin in Affinity Designer, setting up our artwork. I'll walk you through the ProRip software, and then we'll walk through the marrying process, and of course, setting our transfer and our final finishing step to get the optimal end result with our iColor 550 using our iColor Two-Step Select Ultra Bright Media. Before we can open our design in the ProRip software, we do need to make some edits to it to give us the best output for our finished product. I'm going to be using Affinity Designer, which is my preferred professional graphic design software. I cannot stress enough that if you plan on printing garments with your white toner printer, you must have a decent amount of knowledge using any professional graphic design software. The tools and features that are in these programs are going to give you the capabilities to create the best quality design that meets your standards and your customer standards. Now, I prefer to use Affinity Designer as it is a vector-based software and has a pixel persona for roster-based editing, which is what we're going to use today. It only has a handful of features. Um, the full features are available in Affinity Photo, which I could also use, but using the pixel persona of Affinity Designer is going to be quick and easy to make the changes to my artwork that I need. When I talk about professional graphic design softwares, I am referring to programs like Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, Corel Draw, or similar. Most other programs that are out there are not going to give you the features that you need. ProRip does give you the ability to export your graphic to Photoshop and GIMP if you have those softwares and make edits and reopen it, but I prefer just to set my artwork up ahead of time and make it easy. So we will start by going to File and Open to open my artwork. I'm using this design that's available on my website, www.ofloveandshiplab.us. This was one of my fall designs last year, and it is going to be perfect for my upcoming Friendsgiving. Now, I have a couple of options with this design of what I can do. And what you might do with your artwork is going to depend a lot on the shirt that you are choosing. It cannot be stressed enough that when it comes to white toner, your prints are going to feel the best, have the best stretch and have the highest washability if you have more dead space. You can of course print something like this as it is and you can choose to use the rasterization feature of ProRip software to add lines or holes into your artwork, which 
is great and very useful and is going to give it that softer feel, but it's not what everyone wants. I've seen a lot of people say that they don't like the look of having the lines or the holes or the squares or whatever shape you choose in their artwork, and that's completely understandable. So if that is not what's for you, you're going to want to be making edits and making conscious decisions about the types of the colors of shirts that you pair with designs to give you the best results. The biggest flaw I see across all of the different parts of the printing industry is that too many people want to print any design on any color garment. And this is just not even a realistic expectation because you will never be able to give your customer the highest quality product by using that mentality. The best way to approach something like this is to have specific colors that you use and and um, modify your artwork a specific way to suit those colors. So for this particular design, I have a couple of different shirt colors I could use if I wanted to sell this in my shop and I wanted to make sure that people had some options. One, I could always do white. I could always do white and do sublimation. If I only had a white toner printer, I could do white, but uh, it's going to be a little bit harder to work around because this is the only real white that's in the design. So for that, I would probably still want to use rasterization. I could use a burnt orangish brown color shirt, which would actually also be perfect. With that, I would have the ability to completely remove the color of the pie, this uh, burnt orange color, and let the shirt be that color. I could even go one step further and change the orange that's in these leaves to also be this color. And then I would be able to use the color of the shirt as well there. And I would create a ton of negative space in this design by default. Now, today we're going to be using black. So we're not going to have as much negative uh, space as we could if we were using orange, but we're still going to have quite a bit because if you look at this design, we have black around our leaves, black inside of our leaves, black all throughout our slice of pumpkin, including in the whipped cream. And we're going to remove all of that and it's going to create a nice amount of negative space in this design, which will make it feel really soft on our shirt. But obviously using a black shirt, our text is not going to show up. So we want to address changing our text color and we want to remove the black from the rest of this design. A really great way to always have a visual is to simply use a color block. I will select my rectangle tool and I will click and drag that just to cover my entire document space. And then I'll come over here to my color panel and I'm just going to make it black and I will drag it down below my design. So now I can see what my design would look like on a black shirt and that will make editing a little bit easier. Of course, this is a little hard to see. Um, what we're working with. So I will deselect my black rectangle right now while we make our edits. We want to select our graphic and you'll notice that it has a lock next to it. We just click that to remove the lock so that we can make edits to it. You want to make sure that your image that you're using does say pixel in parentheses next to it as the format. Um, if it does not say pixel, if it says image or something else, you will simply right click on it and select rasterize. And this is going to convert it to a pixel so that you can make edits in your pixel persona. Now we'll go ahead and click over to our pixel persona, which has that little um, square pixels icon. Now over here, you want to make sure that you have your design itself selected and we're going to go to select and select sampled color. Now it will automatically select sort of like the outer edge of the most dominant color, but if you were trying to select a specific color, you would simply use your little um, crosshair cursor there to select whichever color it is that you are trying to change. We wanna change our text to white first and then we'll, do the, we'll select sampled color again and we'll remove the black from our leaves and our pie. So it's going to be two different steps, but using the same tool both times. Once you have selected your color, which again, this did automatically select it, you can use this adjustment slider to adjust the tolerance. And basically that's going to pick up um, any similar shades of the color that you have selected. 
Um, I find that the 15% is honestly almost always perfect, but if you need to adjust yours, you can do that with the slider. And once you're ready, once you can see your marching ants all the way around everything that is that you are trying to change, you will hit apply. Now, don't worry about the fact that we can also see it around the leaves and part of our pie because we are actually just going to focus on editing our text. So it won't really matter. We'll be able to make that selective color change, which if we were using the ProRip software and we knocked out the black, it would just remove this from all of this. Um, and that would be it. But also it's only going to use the app, remove the absolute black. And with this, with Affinity Designer, if we, let me zoom in on this. So my text here is actually 3D, if you can see that. Um, if I were to use that select and select sampled color and choose this shade of black, it would only select that and it would leave these shades. When you're using the knock me blackout, it's going to do the same thing. So um, once again, this is just why using an actual graphic design software is going to give you more precision editing for these types of things um, that you want to make for your artwork to give you the best results. So we have everything selected on the outer edge, which is what we want. We are now going to use our flood fill tool. We're going to come over to our color panel and select white or maybe just like a soft gray. I guess white might be a little bit bright. So we'll do like a soft gray. And we're just going to click to fill in our text. Now you will notice there's a few little spots here. That's where the color is different and was beyond the threshold there that we had sent the tolerance. And I can choose to go back in and change those, but I'm going to wait and see how it looks because it might just be fine with that little bit of spots on there. Okay, so if I zoom out, it looks like I got all of my text. All right, and what we'll do then is go to select and deselect or command or control D. Move that a little closer so you guys can see it. And now I'm just gonna recheck that black background. So when I recheck that, I can see that those little, um, those little, uh, shading spots, I guess I would call them throughout my text. It's not really hindering my design and I actually don't have an issue with it as at all. I think it gives the text a little bit of um, a little bit something so it's not quite so flat. So I'm just going to leave it. But if I wanted to make sure I got all of that, I would simply have adjusted the tolerance uh, at first or I would come back in here now and do that select select sampled color and zoom in and select that little gray spot that's there and then go through and fill those again just like I did with my um just like I did with my flood fill tool here already so just something to keep in mind if you happen to be using text that has any type of gradients or in this case it's 3d which does have gradients as well now we're going to knock out the black so let me deselect my black rectangle again, because that's just supposed to represent our shirt color. I want to make sure I have my graphic selected and I want to go to select, select sampled color. And this time I'm going to select the black. So I'll just click on the black and you will see that it selected it all along my pie throughout my whipped cream all into my leaves. That's exactly what we wanted because we want to remove all of that so that that will just create some all natural organic space in our design that's going to give it that softer feel and better washability and better stretch. All of that that we're going for, for the best quality shirt that we can give to our customers. I will hit apply. Again, you can always adjust the tolerance if you see any areas that are not picking up. I do not see any that are not picking up. This tends to work pretty well for this purpose. So I'll just hit apply. And then if you're using a Windows computer, you can actually just hit the delete key or the backspace key. But if you are using a Mac, I learned that those two do not do the same thing. So you will just go to edit and then delete. And you will see that all of that black has now been removed. And we can go to select and deselect again. 
check our rectangle, and this is what we're gonna have for our output of our design. This is perfect, this looks great, this is what I want. So we will get rid of that black rectangle because we do not want to export that, and we will come over to our designer persona and go to File, Export, keep it the same size. I've got my PNG, I'll do Export, and I'm just gonna put this in my download so it's easy to find. Uh, and I'm going to change this to say edited white toner so that in the future when I want to print this design, I already have that edited file ready for me. Now let's go ahead and open up our ProRip software. I can just get rid of this. Uh, oh yeah, I don't want to make save those changes. Okay. Now let's open up our ProRip software. So in our ProRip software, the very first step is to always select the queue that you're going to be printing in. We're gonna be using our overprint queue today, and you'll notice that in the bottom corner, it does show you how your toner cartridges should be laid out. Always make sure to double check this, especially if you have done a recent project where you might have used your underprint or CMYK queue because your toner cartridges might not be in the correct positions. I have printed transfers more than a few times where I did not check this and ended up wasting costly media for my own careless mistakes. So I always want to make sure to remind you guys not to do that. The next thing that we're going to do is select our paper type from our drop down menu and the size. We are using the select ultra bright, which means we're just going to choose the select option. There isn't a separate one for ultra bright. Um, select and select ultra bright do follow all of the same steps. So if we wanted to be adding that rasterization automatically with holes or stripes, we could choose those. But again, we just created negative space in our design so easily using Affinity Designer. And that is going to be all that we need to give this optimal feel without really changing the overall look of our graphics. So we're going to be happy. Our customers are going to be happy and they're going to have a great product that lasts. So I'll hit that select and just verify that my page size is a four, which is the media size that I have. Next, we'll go ahead and import our graphic by clicking on open. And there is my artwork. Now my artwork obviously needs to be rotated. So let's click on page, job, sorry, click on job. And where's my rotate? Rotate. And we will do 90 degrees. There we go. And let's just go ahead and resize this to fit to page. I think it's a little too close to my edges if you see there. So I'm just going to come down here and we will put this down. Let's see, eight inches. If I was going to do this, if we're going on a large shirt, I typically do sh designs on a large shirt, eight to, or sorry, 11 to 11 and a half inches wide. So 11 and a quarter is actually perfect. Let's get this centered, center on page, and just double check that we're not too close to our edges. We do want to have a little bit of a margin here. I think we're good. Yeah, because we've got a little space on the outside of our leaves. Um, it looks like that was just dead space around the design. But the edges top to bottom are very close. Okay, so that will be perfect. Before you print, you always want to double check your directions and make sure that you do actually see uh, that the input tray and the paper type are selected correctly here. You can check those with the instructions that come with your media. And if you ever don't have the instructions, you lost them, you simply go to icolorprint.com and underneath the support tab, you will be able to find all of the instructions and also the most up-to-date instructions for the media that you are using. I always like to double check that just to make sure that I know that nothing has changed and that I do have everything set correctly. The next thing that we want to do is make some adjustments to our color so that we can get the best output for our design. 
This is something you always want to consider, especially when you're printing on darker garments. Because I'm printing on black, I want to make sure my design is going to look vibrant and not look dulled down. One of the complaints that you might see about white toner printing with some of the lesser two-step papers is that the colors do look duller on the finishing step. Ultra Bright is specially made to prevent this from happening. Um, so you can retain your colors a lot better on that finishing step than you typically do with uh, some of the other two-step papers. And it's one of the reasons why this paper has gotten so incredibly popular, and I'm definitely loving it as well. I, the Select is great also, but the Select Ultra Bright really just gives you that extra oomph to give you great quality shirts for an affordable cost of media. Um, and to me, there's not much more you can ask for. If you're looking for a good combination of affordability, brightness, feel on output, stretchability, you get it all with the Eye Color Two Step Select Ultra Bright. So we're going to select that Color Adjust button right here underneath our Job tab. And the very first thing I want to do is make sure that I deselect this enable ink removal and very whole size areas on partial transparency. I do not want my graphic to be rasterized. We're not choosing any rasterization settings. So we want to make sure that we have deselected these so that we don't end up with little holes or lines throughout our artwork because that's not what we want. Now, because I'm doing this on a black shirt, I do want a bit more white coverage underneath. 200 is sort of the, the average, and that's fine on a lot of shirts, but whenever I do black, I always bump this up to at least a 300, if not a little bit more. So I'm gonna put that up to 300, and we will call that one good. The next thing I wanna do is boost my saturation, and I'm going to put this up to a seven. If you were using like really vibrant reds, you'll probably find that boosting your saturation even more would be better. Um, I found that seven works pretty good for this particular design, so that's the one I'm gonna go with. I'm also gonna boost my brightness to a two, and I'm going to imp up my colors. I'm gonna do four, four, and four. Now, if you're wondering, how do you know how much to boost everything? The thing is, is you don't unless you have been practicing and working through using the ProRip software for your artwork. So a little tip, something that I learned from other people in the industry, is if you are trying to make sure that your print is perfect and you're not sure as you're about to make some color adjustments, the best thing to do is to use transparency media and print on that. You will simply choose the transparency media setting that is um, in the drop down menu where we selected our eye color uh, select. You will choose that and you will print on your transparency um, so that you can get a visual for what your print is going to look like. Now you would want to use transparency media because you can get like a pack of a hundred sheets of transparency media for I think like $16 on Amazon. That's where I happen to purchase mine. You can also find it at office supply stores. You just want to look for laser transparency media. So search for that laser transparency media, get yourself a pack of that, and use that anytime you are questioning if your colors are going to be good enough. I have already printed mine, so I will actually show you those when we switch back over to the camera just so you can see what I'm talking about. But this is the best way to be able to get a visual for how your design is going to look and hold it against whatever garment you're planning on printing on. Um, and avoid wasting costly media because the last thing you want to do is print hope for the best press it and waste not only the media itself but also a garment so transparency media for testing your colors with white toner printing is your best friend absolutely make sure that you get some it's a great little hack um, and it never fails and of course once you have all your settings correct or you know like i already know that this is what's going to work best for this design so once I have all of these settings correct, the next thing that I would do would, would be to keep a log of this so that when I print this design in the future, I know that these are the settings that I need to be using for all of my customers to always have the right output. So once you've made your adjustments, you're just going to go ahead and hit OK, and now we are ready to print. All you have to do to print is make sure you've got your graphics selected and hit our little rainbow print job. Let me switch over to the camera so you guys can see um, which tray the Select Ultra Bright is going in and watch it print. 
So we're going to be putting our A sheet of our eye color two step ultra bright into our bypass tray, which is this one that sort of pops out. It already tells us that the print size should be face down. Um, if you're new, see if you guys can see this on the camera. So see how that one side is like super glossy and the other one is frosted. That's how you can tell the difference between the print side and what's not the print side. The print side is going to be the frosted side, the high gloss side. See, it's kind of catching the light. That is your back. So we'll put it in face down, adjust my paper guides in since my last print was letter size. Always make sure you do adjust your paper tray accordingly. Um, I have learned that this can cause misfeed errors if you don't. So same with if you're using the other tray as well. So I mentioned I was using, or I tested, and you guys should also test with transparency paper. And you'll see that I've got a couple of printed off here. So here's my shirt that we're going to be printing after we lint roll it and, and uh, press it so it's nice and flat to work on. This is the transparency paper I got off of Amazon. Like I said, it was like a pack of 100 for $15, $16, but it's a great way to test out your colors. So you'll see I tried three different options here. One, I did try one that was rasterized and I didn't love it. And you can see, tilt you guys down a little bit more. You can see when I put this on the garment that it's honestly really washed out. Now there's a light behind us, but um, still, you can still see that it looks really washed out. So this one was definitely not the answer. And then I believe this one was my second attempt. Nope, this one was. So then I did this one and you can see I had my colors turned up more and my saturation turned up more and it's very orangey, which is also not what we want. And then this one was the one with the settings that we just used, and that one was definitely the best option. So wasting 20 cents, 30 cents worth of transparency sheets is way better than wasting a $2 and chains piece of eye color select ultra bright or also wasting a t-shirt. So because we got our settings right, and we just, again, held it up, we can see that that's the colors that we want we are ready to go ahead and print. So we just did all of our setup and we'll just pop over here so you guys can see our iColor 550 print. I'm using the iColor 550. The new model is the iColor uh, 560. And then there's also the, um, the 600 series, which is the larger model. So if you wanna do, not have to worry about piecing prints together and stuff like that, then you'll definitely wanna go with the larger model. This works perfectly for all of my uses, which primarily is for demo stuff, but nonetheless, this is exactly what we need. So what you're hearing right now is the printer warming up and then it's going to spool the design where it's going to roll the toner onto sort of like a big roller that's inside the machine. And then it's gonna pull the paper through and sort of roll it right on top of it and spit it out the back. Now, once this is all warmed up and you're printing, um, it will print, I believe, 40 to 60 sheets per minute, which is really impressive, especially if you're needing to do volume work um, for your business. So if you wanna print on dark garments, cotton garments, and you're looking for something that has a lot of versatility because you can do so much more than garments with the white toner printer, then this is definitely something you want to check out. You can check out my year in review frequently asked questions video as well to give you a good idea of what to expect um, with this printer and how to use it. All right, so there's our A sheet printed. Keep in mind that um, what you see for your overall look of your transfer, um, it's not gonna be exactly accurate until you press them. So the first thing we need to do is, the first thing that we need to do is our adhesive. So this is called marrying. It's where you combine the A sheet and the B sheet. 
Um, you're going to be adding the adhesive to the back of your page. Let me move my box of t-shirts out of the way. I'm going to be using my Endura Press SD20. This is not a super fancy heat press, but it does work really well for white toner. It has an adjustable lower platen, so you can make sure that you are getting even pressure from front to back, which is one of the reasons why it is recommended for white toner printing. Now, it doesn't have a digital pressure gauge. So if you struggle with your pressure, the easiest thing to do is what's called the paper test. When you're marrying your um, A and B paper, it needs to be an eight PSI, which is firm, but not super firm. So what you're gonna do is take a couple pieces of computer paper. I recommend taking about three, three or four, kind of depending on what paper you've got. I've just got like standard cheap copy paper. And what you wanna do is stick it about halfway into your press, and then you wanna go ahead and close it. Now, two things that you're looking for. One is the amount of resistance you get from your handle. If you are getting just enough resistance, you're probably on firm already. If you are struggling to close your heat press, then you're on extra firm. You wanna be on firm because if you use extra firm, you're gonna push all that adhesive out along the edges of your transfer, and you don't want any of that. The next thing that you're looking for is your paper. Now firm, you should not be able to move your paper at all. In fact, if you were to yank on this, it should probably rip. And that's really just as simple as it is. You're looking for a lot of that feel for the tension that you're getting from your handle and then how easily your paper can be pulled out when it's closed. If this was on light pressure, I would be able to pull this out pretty easily. And if it was on medium pressure, um, it would give a little resistance, but I should still be able to pull it out. So that gives you a good point of reference. Um, it does take a little bit of practice if you're not using a heat press with the digital pressure gauge to really get used to how your heat press works and the best settings for it. The paper test is great. You can use this. Basically, you're just looking to have as much paper thickness as the paper that you are using. For most A and B paper, about three sheets of standard copy paper works perfect. So now we're gonna marry our A and B paper. Let me grab an adhesive sheet. So I'm just gonna reheat this. I've been kind of heating it um, back and forth while we've been going through things. But the first step is to make sure that your lower platen is nice and hot. So you do this by simply closing your press and letting it run for the whole one minute, or two minutes, 120 seconds. Um, I've already been doing this and this has been hovering, so I already know this is really hot. So I'm just gonna give this about 60 seconds and it should be ready to go. So while that's going, your the side that your adhesive is gonna go to is gonna be the back of your design. For the eye color select ultra bright, you can't tell in the video, I don't think. Well, maybe you can, okay. This side is glossy. This is not the adhesive side, this is the back. This matte side, which if you could feel it, if you have it in front of you and you're feeling it, it has like a paper texture versus this, which has like a sticker texture. So this is like a high gloss sticker. This is like paper on the back. The matte side is the adhesive side. This is explained in the directions as well. So again, I can't reiterate enough, just read the directions and follow them because they are very detailed. And they tell you little things like, that so you can know how to differentiate between the front and the back. Now, if you've used eye color select, then you know that the silky side is the adhesive side. So the ultra bright is different, and that's why it's important, again, to always refer to those directions. Now, when you set your white toner print up here, you always wanna make sure that you're gonna be in a good spot to get nice, even pressure. I don't like to put mine too far back because I don't wanna get burned when I open this. We're gonna cover this with our coated craft paper. And, we're gonna go ahead and let this run at 310 degrees for 120 seconds. So that's two minutes. I find that 310, as the directions recommend, is actually perfect. So that is the temperature that I continue to use. You may find that a different one works better for your heat press and that's fine as well. Uh, the most common issue I see is people having trouble marrying their A and B paper. And I promise you, it's not as challenging as it seems. 
the biggest component of it is making sure that you have enough pressure and really knowing your heat press. So if you're using your heat press all the time, you should have a good judgment for how firm the pressure is, um, how firm the pressure is, how, I don't know, how the temperature is running, if the temperature is running too hot and you need to lower it. Um, you should know how well your pressure is from front to back and know that it's even or not and if you need to make adjustments for that. So all of that stuff does matter. And this is why those higher end heat presses that have, that are automatically level and um, have digital pressure gauges and whatnot are so frequently recommended. It is not because they want you to just buy a super expensive heat press. It is because in order to get the best results and have the most seamless user experience, you do actually need to have some decent equipment or at the very least know your own equipment. Now I have done white toner marrying on a variety of heat presses at this point and I have learned that it really is about knowing your heat press. So this is a really good budget model. I believe it's like just under $900. You can purchase them through signwarehouse.com and I don't really have any real issues with this. I personally don't love swing aways. <laughs> That's just my preference. But for a white toner, this is perfect. Um, as most of you know, I also do sublimation. And so for sublimation, I don't love it. But for white toner, it's great. So we've got just about 18 seconds left. I'm going to kind of tilt you guys so you can see me open this up um, and peel our AB paper. Okay, so when you open this, you do wanna move quickly, but you have what's called a dwell period. And during your dwell period, you're basically, it's a couple of seconds. So I like to rub this maybe five, six times for the ultra bright. And then I like to just lift it up and get some air underneath it. Give it another two runs with my hand. And then I'm gonna peel back, making sure I am keeping this on my lower platen and doing a nice, slow, consistent peel you want to go nice and evenly at an angle. And then you always double check your adhesive sheet. Get that in view there. So you see how you can see where the adhesive pulled off? That's where you see like the color toner that transferred a little bit. So you're always just kind of looking to see also if any of your toner transferred to your adhesive sheet, which ours did not. That means that our pressure wasn't too high. So that's a good sign. And um, of course, you're also looking to make sure that all of your design got adhesive, especially if you have little parts, which we didn't in this, but the instructions even tell you to observe the, the adhesive sheet. Your B sheet is the adhesive sheet. And that's why you're looking for all those little things that um, could have happened before you end up putting this on a garment because you certainly don't want to ruin a whole item. So here's our transfer ready to go on our shirt. Our colors are looking pretty good. Now, the only other thing is you want to make sure that we trim off our edges because you see that little adhesive line. You can have those really anywhere. See there's some up there as well. So we want to trim all that off before we put this on a shirt with some scissors. Now, if you were selling transfers, I would just use like a paper cutter and trim this really good. So you'd be ready to go to ship out your transfer. This would be ready to go as a transfer, just so you do know that as well. So let's go ahead and grab our t-shirt. So I'm just using a Bella and Canvas, uh, I believe it's 100% cotton. Yep, oops, sorry, not on the camera. Bella and Canvas, 100% cotton, all black shirt. Just gonna get this up here, give it a little lint roll because it's been in and out of its little storage box, so tuck that under. Don't want to burn myself, obviously. Lint roll. Okay. It's always a good idea to cover your garment. We're just pressing this really quick so that we can, one, make sure that our pressure is 
maximum firm pressure because you always want the firm pressure for your garment. Typically, unless your garment is super thin, um, the pressure that you already have set should be perfect once the shirt is in there. If your garment is really thick, then you might need to loosen your pressure a little bit. But we're gonna bring this over and my rule of thumb is to always cover because you just never know what's on your heat press and can transfer. The eye color line of two-step papers can also be pressed at lower temperatures so that you can avoid dye migration. Not really an issue with cotton, but it is an issue with polyester or cotton polyester blends. Also lowering your temperature is going to allow you to have, um, to keep your colors from any like major dulling, which again can happen with other papers. It's definitely improved upon with the Ultra Bright and that's one of the reasons why this paper has been so popular. So I'm gonna lower my temperature to 285 and we only need 30 seconds. So let's get our time down. Okay, my press is gonna cool pretty quickly. Um, I just want to give my shirt a pre-press so that we can make sure it's nice and flat and ready to work on with our design. We don't want any weird wrinkles in it. And again, that gives us an opportunity to make sure we got that firm pressure that we need for this project. So I'll let this run the full 30 seconds. You know, it doesn't really hurt anything to let it go and you can see our temperature has already dropped and it will keep dropping. It'll drop pretty quickly actually. Let me get my adhesive sheet out of the way, toss that in the garbage. I'm gonna put a dent in my wall. <laughs> okay, and all right, I think my shirt looks pretty good. I can take this time while my press is cooling to make sure I've got it straight. You can always um, use your laser level or you can use one of these handy things. I just got this recently. This might be the first video I'm even using it in, but this I got from my local vinyl supply shop, uh, JC Blanks. They sell laser cuts and sublimation blanks and vinyl blanks galore. They are located here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Um, and this handy dandy ruler thing is fantastic for being able to line up your designs. You basically just line up with a collar and then put your design in place. So we still have our press cooling and I'm going to just cut off those edges. So I've cut them all around and now I'm gonna go ahead and get this centered. Now you can choose to center this a lot of different ways. Um, most people just eyeball it. You can use a laser level, but if you don't have any of those things, just fold your design in half. Make sure that you have the furthest edges lined up with each other. So for me, it's gonna be those two leaves right there. Actually, it's gonna, yeah, no, it is those two leaves. Okay, the edge of those two leaves and you can just, Put a crease there at the top. You don't want to crease your design itself, but you can put a crease there at the top and on the bottom in your um, transfer sheet. And then you can just line this up with the center. This of course has a mark letting me know where the center is. And if we were ever unsure that we were lined up, we can just always use our handy laser level. This is one of my favorite tools. I'm kind of amazed at how many people don't have this. <laughs> This is like $16 at Walmart, and I'm here to tell you, it just makes things so much easier. See, I just get it centered. And I'll line it up with, there we go. Trying to get my bubble centered. Um, and line it up with our design and our little notches, which we are like way off at the moment. And then of course we always wanna check our placement. So for a design like this, um, going on a large shirt, we basically want the middle of the design to fall right at the armpit. I know it's a little off the, right there, <laughs> right off the armpit. I know it's off the camera. Um, 
you, I know that some people like to use a rule that's like, oh, three inches down, but that's actually not a great rule. Um, and the reason why it's not a great rule is because it's not universal to all shirt sizes. So for a large, it might be three fingers down. In fact, I think that it is about three fingers down. But for a 2XL, if you do three fingers down, that design is going to be on the top of someone's chest versus over the chest. And we want that placement to be over the chest. So placement is really important, in my opinion, although I see a lot of people who don't feel that way. But having good placement is just another testament to your quality product. And that's how you get people to, to pay higher prices. So I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to line this up. Get centered. And then I do need to just bring this design down just a hair. It's a little bit higher up than I want it. Oops. We're just sticking a little bit. Let's try it again. Down. Line that up accordingly. Bring this over a little bit. All right. And when all else fails, if you want to be sure everything's completely centered and you don't trust your eyeballing, you can always measure with your tape measure. If you guys have been following my videos for a while, you know, oops, sorry, you know that I very much believe in measuring everything and making sure that things are centered. So we'll grab this really quick and it looks like our heat press is almost to temp. Grab the edge of our text there. Got just about five inches. Then we'll come on the other side to the edge of our leaf. And we are right at five inches there as well. So we have our hopefully perfect placement. Make sure my text looks straight. You can always, again, use that laser level to make sure your text is straight. It's a little hard with script text, so I always recommend you look for whatever um, whatever letter is a baseline letter. So, uh, well, there actually isn't really a good one with this particular font. <laughs> I didn't think that part through, obviously. So in that case, you just eyeball it. Now, we're gonna stick this on. Only takes 30 seconds with our firm pressure, maximum firm pressure, 285 I'm doing for 30 seconds. And then you'll want to have some ice packs on hand. I have two here. This will just help us speed up the cooling process. And the Ultra Bright does tend to do a little bit better if you put something cold on it. So it'll actually cut down the, um, the time it takes for this to be ready to peel by like half um so it'll be a little bit faster if you were mass producing you would just print all of your shirts and by the time you're done you would be ready to just peel your carrier sheet so all right move that out of the way i'm just gonna pull this off now we still have to do our finishing steps so we don't want to turn our heat press off just yet but we, you can choose to let this cool all on its own, but this needs to be ice cold. So to me, it's just so much easier to throw those ice packs on there, rub them around. We'll give them a few minutes. It won't even take a few minutes. I think the directions say to wait like a minimum of five minutes, but when this is cooling, it needs to be ice cold. So I'm going to let that sit there for a second. So we're just going to give this a few minutes. Let me um, get you guys a little better view. Apparently our stand doesn't want to stay where I'm putting it, but we're going to rub this around because we want this to be ice cold. I've seen some people have trouble with the eye color ultra bright, and this is definitely what I have found works best. It needs to be completely cold, not just cool to the touch. And keep in mind that just because you think it feels cool to the touch does not mean it is actually cool. When you're carrier sheet is ready to come off, it should basically come right off with very little resistance. So rubbing this with an ice block. I've got an ice pack here too. I'm just going to rub it around really good. And you can use um, like a ceramic tile, something that absorbs heat like that. You can use uh, they make like a, I think it's like slate. You can use one of those. 
I think they make like a steel one as well. All right, let's see where we're at. Okay, looks like we're almost there. Oh, there we go, okay. And then when you're ready to peel it off, it should come off relatively easily. If you see any areas sticking like right there, we're just gonna give it another good rub. The ice really makes a difference with the Ultra Bright, I've noticed. With the Select, it tends to come off right when it's cool. Most other two-step paper, it does come off pretty easily when it's cold. So we just give that a little pull. And like I said, it should come off relatively easily with a slight little jiggle. And if you see any areas that are sticking, here again, you're just gonna rub it with your ice block. And keep on pulling. There we go. If you find that kind of rolling it down like this and peeling it back kind of in the circular motion, works really well as well. All right. So you can see our design. I got a little dust from my ice block on there. All right, so there's our design. Our colors look really good. Let me try and get that a better light for you. There we go. All right, our colors look really good. We still have to do our finishing step. Now, some of the two-step papers look really glossy after this step. Uh, the Ultra Bright and the Select do not, but they have a very paper-like feel that's gonna go away once we do that finishing step press. So let's go ahead. Get back over on our heat press here. Your finishing step is just gonna be for 30 seconds. So we wanna get that up on there. Really good. Make sure you guys can actually see. For your finishing step, you do need to cover your design with a special coated paper. Now there are a couple of different ones that are available. One is this tea sale sheet, which you can see I've obviously used, I used it on a red tank top. <laughs> um, the tea sale sheet has a visible wax-like coated layer. Uh, I mean, it might be silicone, I guess. And this really helps embed the transfer into your fabric better. I find that I like the tea sale better on thicker cotton garments. I think that it, the results are more visible, but I still have decided that this is my favorite one. Now, if you're not using the tea seal, you would be using the special coated craft paper. This is also available from iColor, both of these are. The iColor uh, craft paper, it has a coating, like you can feel it on there, even though you can't visibly see it. And again, that just helps embed the toner transfer into your garments accordingly. So we'll put this on, cover that up good, bring this over, and we've got our temperature has dropped a little bit, but um, it doesn't really matter. Honestly, you can do it as low as I think 250. So on your finishing step, lowering your pressure can, or lowering your temperature, sorry, can actually help prevent any dye migration, which again, not an issue with cotton, but is an issue with cotton polyester blends or polyester items. Um, and it also just helps prevent your colors from dulling. So all these little steps that we're doing, increasing our vibrancy, pressing at lower temperatures, it's all going to help give your shirt the most vibrant look. And we'll just carefully pull that off, give it a little jiggle. And that looks great. Let me put it over on a chair so it's a little easier to see. Watch out, puppy dog. And Jasper's in the way. But... 
So there's our garment. Um, our colors look great. Our design looks awesome. It looks really vibrant on our uh, cotton black shirt here. Let's have a nice close up look at it. You can see that you can see the texture of the fiber in your transfer. That's from that T-seal sheet. It gave it a nice and pressed it in there so it bonds well. And it's got really good stretch. I mean, obviously, some people might be wearing shirts that are too tight, but for the average, for the average wearer who knows their size, uh, you'll find that this gives plenty of stretch. And by adding all of that negative space in or when we took out our black, we've created even more zones where it's easy to stretch it. And this will also wash great for that reason. So put that up there. And that is your demo of the eye color two two step select ultra bright media. This has become my favorite transfer of paper personally. I really think that the quality of the transfer looks outstanding on your garments. Um, it has great washability. It's really affordable. You honestly can't go wrong with it. I've been so happy when, since I finally got to try it a few months ago. And if this was going to be one that I recommended above all else, it would be this one, especially if you're looking for the right mix of a high quality results in your garment plus affordability in your media. There are better papers such, I, such as iColor Premium and Premium Stretch, but they also come at a higher price point. So the Select Ultra Bright, it meets you right in the middle where so many people want to be and it gives you an outstanding item. Now I've got a shirt to wear to my friends giving in a few weeks. And I think that's about it. So if you have any questions or comments, you can post them in our group, sub that, sublimation graphics and tutorials. If you wanna learn more about the world of white toner, check out our videos and also check out the group White Toner Transfer Support Group on Facebook. Thank you so much for joining us and I hope you guys have a great rest of your evening.